Today we're going to go on a bit of a winding journey into circle geometry. Now I love the topic of circle geometry but uh, it's a little bit of a shame. Circle geometry no longer features really in a deep way throughout the New South Wales mathematics syllabus that I teach. Uh, there used to be in the advanced uh, course a lot of deductive geometry in plain shapes which led to a lot of circle geometry in the extension one course both of which are not really part of the syllabus anymore however they haven't disappeared entirely because up in extension two a lot of the work that we do in complex numbers on the argand diagram is actually it actually produces circles and therefore to understand the geometry there you end up doing circle geometry so it kind of is snuck in as a little Little bit of assumed knowledge and the thing that I love about it even if you don't have to do extension 2 is that it's a fantastic uh, emblem or embodiment of the reasoning that is right at the heart of the mathematics discipline and the mathematics courses that I, I teach and my students learn. So what I want to do is I actually want to just uh, explore and unpack a single theorem, a single property that applies to circle geometry and uh, I want to kind of take you on a little bit of a journey of uh, proving it, but also uh, proving uh, something a bit uh, a bit unusual about it. Well, at least it was unusual to me. Um, after teaching for 15 years, I was kind of surprised that this is the first time I encountered it. So, without giving more preamble, let me tell you about the particular property that I'm interested in. It's about what we call the angle in a semicircle. So, if you take any circle and you draw any diameter. So you can see I've already marked the center of this circle. So if I draw a chord that passes through that center, it'll be a diameter. So if I say, for example, place a, let's get a straight line here, place a chord right through the center like so. Okay, fantastic. So this is a diameter. Now, if I then take uh, this diameter and use its ends, like if I call this diameter, uh, diameter A, B, and then I've got the, the center of the circle O there, okay? If I pick any other point on the circle, uh, anywhere on the circumference, I should say, uh, say for instance, a point like, say, here, then if I join up an angle from A to that point, and then go from B to that point, and let's call this new point P. One of the things you'll notice, and if you've uh, drawn a circle yourself at home and you've picked some arbitrary diameter AB and some arbitrary point P, I could put this anywhere that I liked, uh, you would actually show that you always get a right angle. Uh, and in fact, a, a kind of nice neat illustration for this, let me see if I can actually uh, do it all in one go. If I delete my constructions in the manner that I made them and just replace them with this triangle ABP that I've uh, created here. If I just do the triangle from the beginning, let's see I think that's pretty good, let's get those spots there. Okay, what I've got now is this ABP triangle and if I just leave A and B fixed but move P around, you can see what I've got here, so long as I move P somewhere along the circumference of the circle and stay on there, can you see wherever you go you're going to get that right angle. Uh, I can move it even over to the other side. I mean, the symmetry of the circle probably tells you you're always going to get something like that, right? So uh, this this sort of uh, geometric feature that we notice here, because it is true wherever P is on the circumference, uh, one of the uh, ways that we can phrase this is that the angle in a semicircle, because AB the diameter creates, well, creates two semicircles, but the angle in the semicircle, in this case, A P, B, it's always going to be 90 degrees. It's always going to be a right angle. Now, this is kind of cute. It's kind of lovely. Uh, I, I think it's, it's uh, really nice because of its simplicity and also it's, it's slightly surprising. Um, but what, another feature that's really nice about it is it's very easy to prove. And when I have taught this many times in the past, it's always essential not just to give a property, but to say, well, how do I know that that property actually is true? I mean, it kind of looks like it. Um, and you can draw as many circles and diameters and angles in the semicircle that you like and you'll verify this. But one of the things that sets apart mathematics is that giving examples, even lots and lots, millions of examples, is not sufficient to constitute a mathematical proof. What we look for is a deductive argument. We want to see the logic that proves to us why it is the case. Now, 
when I've taught this in the past, I have pretty much always done a version of the proof that I'm about to show you now. And it's, it's pretty straightforward and, and, and simple and brief, which is why I've used it so frequently. And the way to prove that this tr um, angle here, APB, is always gonna be right angled just relies on a few basic features of a circle. So let's just suppose we rewind a little bit. We've created the diameter AB and we've, we've chosen a point P and we wanna know what is that angle there? Like what is this equal to? If I didn't already know that it was 90 degrees, um, how could I evaluate it? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put in a, a, a small construction and then do some calculation with the angles, some, um, some not even calculation really, um, a bit of manipulation of the angles and you'll see why it must be true that APB is right angled. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start by adding in this radius here, O, P. Um, the radius OP is valuable because um, it's not the only radius that I have in this diagram, right? Because AB is a diameter, that means that OA, that's also a radius because it's from the center to the circumference, and so is OB. So what I have here is not just the big triangle ABP, I also have two smaller triangles that are both isosceles because they both have radii making up two of their sides. So here's an isosceles triangle here, and then there's another isosceles triangle here. Now what this gives me is a bunch of angles that I know are going to be equal because equal sides are opposite equal angles, or in fact the other way around, because the thing that I know is the equal sides. So for instance, if I focus in on triangle AOP, you can see that uh, this radius is opposite this side, this radius is opposite that side. So I've got a couple of angles that are equal there. Let's just give them a name. Let's call them both alpha like so, and then I can make the same argument, let's switch over colors, with the other isosceles triangle, right? It's going to be, you might call them the base angles of the triangle here and here. Um, base angles is sort of helpful, but also, also sort of unhelpful. You can see um, these two angles here don't look anywhere near like the base, which tends to be the bottom of something, because a triangle, of course, can be oriented in any direction that you like. But uh, by the same token, if I use a different label because they're obviously not the same size, or they're not in this case anyway. I'll call this angle beta and this angle beta as well. Okay, now I'm only a couple of short steps away from proving what I wanted, which is that APB, uh, let's mark it in here, this angle here is the one that I'm interested in. I can show that it's equal to 90 degrees in a fairly straightforward way, and maybe you can see the logic before I get there. I'm just going to use the big triangle, ABP, and think about its angle sum, right? So if I look at all of the angles in triangle ABP, I might as well mention that in triangle ABP, um, what I've got is there's an alpha up the top, then I've got the angle that I'm interested in, and I'll, I'll write that in orange just to make it very obvious. It's uh, angle alpha plus beta, that's the magnitude of it from uh, over here and here, so I've added them together. And then lastly, I've got angle beta. Uh, that's going to all be equal to 180 degrees because that is what the angle sum of a triangle is. But just doing some very simple uh, collecting of like terms on the left hand side, you can see I've got double alpha plus beta because two alphas, two betas, that's equal to 180. And then just halving both sides gives me the result that I was after. Alpha plus beta, no matter where P happens to be on the circumference, is always going to be that right angle of 90 degrees. So really nice, okay? And then what I would normally do in class is I would move on and we would learn one of the many other circle properties that are part of this topic.